everybody, in this video we're going to be discussing more about complex numbers. We've talked about adding and subtracting as well as multiplying. And so now we're on to quotients or division. And so I suppose I'll start by mentioning one thing. Uh, it is not that we're necessarily finding a quotient, uh, but that when we have two complex numbers written as a ratio or as one over the other, we can re-express that as some new complex number in standard form. So one could necessarily interpret it as uh, rewriting a complex fraction as a, a number in, in standard form and therefore you are kind of finding a quotient. So uh, we do have definitely a technique for doing so and that being said we kind of need to intro this video with discussing uh, what we refer to as complex conjugates. Okay, complex conjugates uh, or conjugates in any sense. Okay, so like we would say you know given some Given some number, you know, like a plus bi, we would say then its conjugate would be the same values, uh, but with a difference. Or if we were given a minus bi, its conjugate would be the same values, but with a sum, okay? And uh, we, we use these for a very, very good reason. And so we'll start by kind of illustrating that reason here. So I've listed a, a couple of numbers here. We say like, you know, we have this complex number over here, a, we have b, and then in general, we're gonna define it right here. But the bottom line is this, I'll start by saying, okay, so let's say we have these two complex numbers. One is 1 plus i, and say this one over here is 4 minus 3i. Uh, but we'll start by just kind of saying, well, what would happen if we multiply these numbers by their complex conjugate? Well, first of all, what would their conjugates be? So uh, now we, we, know, we notice we have 1 plus i. Its conjugate would be 1 minus i. Okay, And so let's go ahead and review our multiplication here. We'd end up with 1, 1, and then we'd end up with, okay, so negative i, we'd end up with positive i, and then we'd have finally minus i squared. Now, a few things we need to say about this, uh, starting with this. In the middle here, you'll notice that these i terms will cancel, and that will always be the case when you multiply two conjugates. Uh, basically, they have the same values, and you know, one being positive and one being negative in the middle would always cause those to cancel. And the other thing we want to point out is this, you know, we get 1, which is basically the first thing times itself, first thing times itself, okay, uh, minus, now, we have minus i squared. Now, recall that i squared, i squared is equal to negative 1. So where we see this i squared now, we can basically go back and say, well, this is 1 minus uh, negative 1. We end up with 1 plus 1, we get 2. And so the beautiful thing about multiplying complex, complex conjugates, not just any conjugates, uh, if you multiply two conjugates, you get a difference of two squares, of course, but uh, complex conjugates is that you ended up with an expression that was purely real. It, it, there were no i's that existed any longer because of the fact that the two in the middle there uh, had opposite signs. They canceled each other out. And the one at the end there has to contain an i squared. Okay, So let's go ahead and look at this one real quick. Uh, what if we multiply 4 minus 3i times its conjugate, its complex conjugate, 4 plus 3i. So you'll notice in the beginning here we get 4 squared, 4 squared, I better not write it that way, let's just write, we get 16. 16, uh, 4 uh, times positive 3i is 12i. You'll notice here that we get our negative 12i, and so essentially those eliminate one another. And then we get minus, always minus, since these are conjugates here. When you multiply these last two terms, one positive, one negative, you always get a, a difference. And then we would get uh, 9i squared. But recall that i squared is simply, that's, that's just like negative 1 here. Okay, so we end up with uh, 16 minus 9 times negative 1. In other words, we get 16 plus 9, end up with 25, which again, is purely real. We, we enjoy the fact that we get a purely real thing, okay, when you multiply complex conjugates. So let's go ahead and write a very formal definition of this. Any two complex conjugates, so in general, a plus bi times a minus bi, you will always get the first number squared, okay, the first number squared, let's write this in red, a squared, uh, you'll get uh, minus a b i plus a b i, so those will cancel, and then we get minus uh, b squared i squared. And of course that i squared, what that causes to happen is we just basically, we say it's negative one, so this minus b squared becomes positive b squared. And it is always the case that when you multiply a complex number by its conjugate, you always get the a squared 
uh, plus b squared. So for example, I mean, if you were to peek back up here, you know, a, a was 4 in both instances. And b, b, whether you wanted to be interpreting it as negative 3 or positive 3, it's 3. And so what we ended up with when we multiplied by conjugates was 4 squared plus 3 squared, which was 25. Okay, 16 plus 9 is 25. So that being said, let's finally start this conversation of finding complex quotients, okay, and writing these quotients as complex numbers in standard form. So the first example, and, and really, I don't know, maybe we'll do two examples here, but, but let's do an example, okay? Uh, what if, and we are given complex quotients from time to time, we'll say there's one. Um, what we want to do is we want to take this. We want to take the number 2 plus 3i over, say, the number 4 minus 2i, okay? So we have two complex numbers, and we're being asked to divide this, and there is no, say, long division for complex numbers or synthetic division. We can look at this as just a quotient. Now, what I'm being told by this guy talking to you right now is that this should be able to be written as a new complex number in standard form. But if division is not really defined, how the heck are we going to deal with something like this? And so what you'll want to write down if you're taking notes, and if you're not, let's go ahead and proceed, is this. Uh, essentially, we don't like having expressions with i in the basement, in the denominator. You know, our goal, our goal, let's go ahead and write it as this. Goal is to eliminate, eliminate any i's, eliminate i's in the denom. Okay, so let's look at it that way. But as a consequence, we'll, we'll accomplish our task, which is being able to write this as a complex number in standard form. Uh, so what we'll do is this, we've already learned that when we want to eliminate an i, what we can do is we can multiply by the conjugate. So we're going to take the top and the bottom of this expression times the conjugate of the denominator, in this case 4 plus 2i. The reasoning behind this is because we know that we'll get the i's to cancel on the bottom, and we can kind of simplify the top. So let's go ahead and talk this one out here. Um, for, the sake of, for the sake of you should just learn this rule, we know that we know that when you multiply two complex conjugates, you might as well just take a squared plus b squared because that's what you get. So in this case, down in the basement, we'd get uh, you know 16 uh, plus 8i minus 8i, and then we'd get minus 4i squared. So in other words, we say well on the bottom a is a is 4, and b is b is 2 or negative 2. We can leave it ambiguous in this case, uh, but basically we know on the bottom we're going to get. 4 squared plus 2 squared, okay? And this can be shown off, you know, if you want to foil it somewhere else. But essentially, we end up with, it looks like here, 16 plus 4 is 20. 20, awesome, okay? So what about the top? Well, okay, so we're actually going to have to foil out the top. We get 8. 8 looks like plus 4i plus 12i, so plus 4i plus 12i, so a grand total of 16i uh, there. And then we say, okay, so plus 3i times 2i is 6i squared, which, is, you know, as we've been discussing, is really just negative 6. So on top, we end up with this 8, positive 8, negative 6, which is 2 for our real part, and then negative 16i, so 2 minus 16i. So now recall that I said, well, you know, we're supposed to be writing this as a complex number in standard form. Yeah, so here's what we'll do. We'll just pop this down here and we say, okay, so we got 2 over 20, 2 over 20 plus negative 16 over 20, and we'll just throw the i off to the side. Or in other words, we get a tenth, a tenth plus, uh, looks like, what do we got here? Negative 4 fifths, negative 4 fifths i, where now we can say this is our a, this is our b, we have our real and imaginary parts, and there's our i. So it was able to be written as a complex number in standard form, and that will be our primary method for uh, rewriting quotients. So just as a matter of, you know, asking us to do this again, what if we, what if we said, okay, so we'll take like 2 plus i over 2 minus i. This is a very basic expression. How would I rewrite this as a complex number in standard form? So let's go ahead and talk about it. You know, we want to multiply the bottom by 2 plus i, it's conjugate, the reasoning behind this, again, just remember, is we don't like i's in the basement. We don't like radicals in the basement, necessarily, period. Okay, so on the bottom here, we know this. If a, if this is like our a, and b in this case is negative 1, that's like negative 1, okay, negative 1, a is 
A is 2, try to squeeze that in there. We're going to get uh, 2 squared, 2 squared plus negative 1 squared. So we end up with, we end up with 5 in our denominator, okay, essentially. Now on top, we foil this out, we get, we get 4 plus 2i plus 2i, so plus 4i. And then we got uh, plus i squared. What do we know about i squared? Well, it's the same thing as negative 1. Okay, so negative 1 we can put in there. So this negative 1 here and our positive 4 out front become 3, and then we had plus 4i. And of course, we want to write this as a complex number in standard form. So we'll just go ahead and do this. We say, so 3 fifths plus 4 fifths i, where 3 fifths is our a, and uh, this is our bi term. Cool, huh?